Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. In this tutorial today, we're gonna to speak about the most important aspect of the technology behind the aquariums, and this is filtration. Just a quick word of warning, I'm going to present you with a lot of theory today and I'm going to talk about some filters that we're using here at Green Aqua. That in no way means that what you're using would not be good. Another full disclosure here, this channel is sponsored by Oase, but we're going to present you with a lot of other brands that we're using here at Green Aqua and we're equally satisfied with it, <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> All right, so uh Filtration is important because you have a lot of decaying organic material in your tank. Decaying organic material will produce ammonia. Bacteria actually will produce ammonia. If you have ammonia in your tank, that is very toxic to fish and can cause algae. So the main role of a filter is to get rid of that ammonia and to transform it into nitrates. Plants are using nitrates as a nutrient and they can uptake nitrates during the process of their photosynthesis, etc., etc. You really need to understand that in order to be able to keep a healthy aquarium and to have your fish not dying, basically. What is getting rid of ammonia in your filter? Bacteria. So the first type of filter bacteria will transform ammonia into nitrates. As the second step, the other type of filter bacteria will transform nitrates into nitrates. So in contrary to what many beginner aquarium hobbyists think, filtration is not about cleaning the water. It's about getting rid of ammonia from your water. So this is it. This is the nitrification process. It is magical what you up to Can I have a minute of your time? You want me to turn my heel and forget you All I know it can't be done How should a filter look like from inside? The green aqua approach towards filtration is just have three types of filter materials in your filter. When the water gets into your filter, it should be filtered through a coarse filter pad to stop all the floating particles from entering the filter itself. The sponge is useful for that. As the second step for the most volume of the aquarium filter, you will need the biological filter media. That is a filter media that has a lot of surface area. That's where the bacteria are living. The bigger surface, the better and those are gonna decompose ammonia into nitrates. As the third step, you have a fine filter mesh to catch all the floating particles from the water that were not caught by the coarse filter pad. You call me early morning, it was a babel. You was out late last night. What else are we using in our filters? We use one more very important thing, and that is sea camp purigen. The purigen will clean your water, removing old tint from it. By our humble and very subjective opinion, after looking at these uh, microscopic images, the best filter media on the market would be the sea camp matrix. You can see the picture, it's a very rugged surface. Obviously, it will not change the pH of the water, which is very, very important. The second filter media that we really like is the ADA Bio Rio. This is also a very high quality filter media. The problem with it is uh, that uh, the particles themselves are really small. So if you don't have an ADA filter with a strong pump, your filter can get clogged quite easily. The third filter media that we highly also recommend is the Eheim Substrate Pro. A fourth media that we tested here is the Sarah Ciprax, which is a medium kind of level filter media. The last picture will show you how the sponge looks under a microscope. You don't even see two threads of sponge on the picture. It's so not efficient. You never come clean and you never 
Let's move on. What kind of other filter things do we have here? We have the ADA-NA carbon here, which is like a carbon thing. It will also remove ammonia much quicker, and some aquarium hobbyists are using that at the beginning of uh, the aquarium's uh, life cycle. I forgot to tell you that professional filtration, filter media, will not remove plant nutrients from your water. So don't be afraid of that. There are two more products that I want to show you. The first one is the bacteria colony that lives in a dormant state in the sea camp stability. You can use that when cycling a new tank and uh, the sea camp stability will add the bacteria to your substrate, to your aquarium water and to your filter. The second product that I want to introduce you is the Seachem Prime. That will remove chlorine from your tap water. So for those of you who are not using RO reverse osmosis water to change the water, Prime is really good or similar products that will remove chlorine from the water. I think this was too much theory for one day. Let me recap this. I'm gonna put it really simple. You need to buy an external filter. You need to put the coarse filter pad, which will probably come with your filter. You will not have to change that at the bottom of the filter as the first step of the filtration. You will need some biological filter media. If you can get CCAM matrix, just get it. Fill your filter fully with CCAM matrix, getting rid of everything that is coming with your filter. And as the last step, you should use the fine filter mesh and you should use the Purigen. That's it, filtration, simple. All right, so let's talk about the different filter types. The first type of filter that you will see when you start the, this hobby will be the internal filter. I'm having the Oasa internal filter here in my hand. It has sponge in it, so no surface at all. You're supposed to change them to uh, some biological filter media. So just buy 500 milliliters, half a liter of Sika Matrix, pour them in and uh, you're gonna be fine. I really think that uh, internal filters are only good for aquariums of around 20, 30 liters maximum. External filters are much better because the canister volume is much bigger. You can have a lot of filter media in it. My recommendation is that buy the best quality that you can and the biggest filter that you can for your tank. If you open the tops, the, the taps here, both in unlock position, you can take out the pre-filtration chamber. This is a very good idea from Oaza. And you have all the sponges in here, which you can clean without taking the filter out to the bathroom, etc. Hose adapter, this is called the hose adapter. This is where the hoses are coming from the aquarium and going back to the aquarium. You're supposed to keep these filters underneath the aquarium, so never put them right next to the aquarium on the aquarium cabinet because they need some, some level difference between them to work. You can remove the filter adapter just by pressing this to unlock position and then you can just remove it, take the filter out, clean it. When you have like a five-fold turnover and you have a big enough canister and everything is okay with your filtration, you would probably need to clean it every month, every two months or so. Oh, and I almost forgot, never clean your filter media in tap water. So when you're taking out this one, just get a bucket of aquarium water and rinse the filter media in that. Why? Because tap water has a lot of chlorine. Find all the pieces for something that truly matters. Keep fighting, keep smiling, just like before. The last type of filtration that I want to talk about is the sump filters. Some filters are good for aquariums above 1000 liters. We have one in the gallery, it's this tank on the right side of the picture, and we made a video about that as well. You can check out the link above. There's one more small thing which is 
remotely connected to filtration and this is the, the surface skimmer the eheim skim 350 this would clean your water surface cleaning the water surface is really good for optical purposes as well but also for gas exchange purposes all filters should be going 24 hours per day they should never ever stop why because you have bacteria living in them and bacteria need oxygen to live Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit technical now. I'm gonna open the Oasa Biomaster filter. This is the filter head. <laughs> the filter head has the heater in it and has the pre-filter chamber in it, okay? This is where the uh, pump is. And this is the filter canister. The filter canister is filled with different types of filter media. I would replace this, for example, with fine filter mesh. Usually the external filters have the first layer of filtration at the bottom. Is right what is this, Waza? You don't need this. Out with it. You don't need this either. Actually, I forgot to tell you that if you're buying an Oasis filter from Green Aqua, you're, you will get the Seacam Matrix for free. That's it. Filter selection. What do I recommend for aquariums, for nano aquariums? The smallest aquarium filter that I would recommend is the classic series Eheim. A better choice would be for you to buy the 2422 experience filter, which is underneath. This filter is already much, much quieter and it already has filter media in it. Another problem with the classic filters is that uh, you need to clean them and they don't have any taps usually coming with them. The only exception for that is the uh, 2213050 050 filter. And this is a mid-size classic filter that comes with double taps and uh, also filter media in it. Never ever use the factory recommendation for external filters. I know that they're gonna always say that some filters are good for aquariums. This small 2211 filter is good for aquariums up to 150 liters. What? The next size would be the 60. This is the 60 liter, this is the 80 liter. The difference between them is that this one is higher. For this, I would probably recommend the Oase Biomaster 350. Can we have a bigger one? Guess what? 600 below this tank. So we actually have the biggest Oase Biomaster filter there is currently below a 60 liter tank. You can never over filter any aquarium. We are here underneath Felipe's tank and I'm not gonna show it to you until I cut it here. <laughs> you can only see half of it. <laughs> this is a 120 tank. We are using the biggest uh, professional 3 series uh, Eheim underneath it. That comes with the heater. You can see that temperature is blinking on the top of it. And anything above this size, I would recommend having multiple filters underneath. Flow. Why is flow important? Flow is important because uh, one, you need to bring the CO2 gas if you have CO2 injection close to the plants in every corner of the tank. Secondly, you need to keep all the debris afloat so that the filter can suck it out. How should you decide which filter to choose when you're thinking of flow? You should use a number of five, a multiplier in uh, calculating the size. So for example, if you have a 60 liter tank, the ideal flow rate would be 60 multiplied by five. That is 350. So you should have a filter, an external filter, that has at least 350 liters per hour strength. For a nano tank, you obviously need a higher flow rate. So like 20 or even 20 plus flow rate would be nice. For a big aquarium, you don't need a five-fold ratio. You would probably need a three-fold ratio. The bigger the aquarium, the smaller the flow rate should be. Ideal is five. That's all you need to know about flow. Another question that we regularly get, why do you need glass in and outflows? No, you don't need them. It's just aesthetics. It's for design reasons. You should place both filter in and outflows on the same side of the tank. Plus, if you have two filters in the tank, you can put them both on the opposite side and then you can have a circulation like this. All right, that's it. I'm not gonna blah, blah some more. 
But thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you didn't do so yet. Hit the like button if you like this video and comment, post any questions you want. Hit the bell button to get notified of my future uploads. Until next week, bye.